Hi, welcome to PK's classes. Today we will study cholinergic drugs or parasympathomimetics. Okay, and parasympathomimetic nervous system, the neurotransmitter we know it is acetylcholine, and accordingly we call them as cholinergic drugs. So, the neurotransmitter here released is acetylcholine, and Acetylcholine then acts on the postsynaptic receptors to show its action and acetylcholine is degraded by the enzyme acetylcholine storage. Okay. And so this enzyme choline storage, this choline storage enzyme is of two types. One is acetylcholine storage and the other is butyryl choline storage. So BCS, you can say butyryl choline storage. So acetylcholine storage is called the true choline storage and this is called pseudo choline storage, butyl choline storage and acetylcholine storage is found in all cholinergic sites, all cholinergic sites, RBC and the grey matter okay, in the nervous system and here the butyl choline storage is only found in plasma, liver, intestine, white matter. Okay, this is in grey matter, this is in white matter. So, plasma, liver, intestine and white matter, butyl choline storage. And all cholinergic sites, RBC and grey matter is acetyl choline storage. And this hydrolyzes mainly acetylcholine and methacholine. And this hydrolyzes ingested esters, ingested esters, and in addition, it can also hydrolyze acetylcholine, butylcholine, and benzoylcholine also. So this is the difference between uh, choline esterases yes. and acetylcholine by degradation by uh, choline esterase. It, uh, it is um, degraded to choline, the alcohol and acetic acid. This is the ester and this ester um, you can see CH2CH2O CO CH2. So this is the ester and this is degraded to alcohol and acid by hydrolysis. So here H O H so it's choline plus acetic acid CH3 COH and N C H3 3 C H2 CH2 OH. So choline plus H. So when we say parasympathomimetic, that means all those drugs which can be directly acting and directly acting as agonist on the muscarinic receptors on muscarinic receptors and we know muscarinic receptors five types m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 and then non selectively acting on all the muscarinic receptors and we can have indirectly acting and indirectly acting that means those which increase the release and those which inhibit acetylcholine esterases. So they, they will increase the level of acetylcholine so they can be cholinergic or parasympathomimetic. So directly acting, indirectly acting. And if you see the classification, the directly acting uh, uh, cholinergic drugs can be classified as the esters of choline and again these esters of choline can be classified is highly susceptible to both acetylcholine esterase and butylcholine esterase, true and pseudocholine esterase. So that is acetylcholine. It is susceptible to both. Less susceptible to true choline esterase and resistant to pseudocholine esterase, that is methacholine. And relatively resistant to both true and pseudocholine esterase, carbacol and methanacol. Besides them, they, we can also classify them as natural and synthetic. Natural alkaloids, muscarine, pilocarpine, aracoline, and synthetic drugs, uh, araclidine, oxotrimorine, 
दीज आर ऑल डायरेक्टली एक्टिंग मस्करिनिक एगोनिश और पारासिम्पथोमाइमेटिक्स और कोलिनोजिक ड्रग्स देन इनडायरेक्टली एक्टिंग दोज हु रिलीज दोज हु इंक्रीज द रिलीज ऑफ एस्टिल कोलिन फॉर एग्जाम्पल फोर अमिनो पायरेडिन एंड ऑल दोज एंटी कोलिन स्टोरेजेस और कोलिन स्टोरेज इनहिबिटर्स दे कैन बी डिवाइडेड एज नेचुरल एंड सिंथेटिक ओनली फाइसोस्टिग्मिन फाइसोस्टिग्मिन इज द नेचुरल एंड ऑल अदर्स आर सिंथेटिक ओके and uh, the short acting we can uh, we can again classify an anticoagulant esterases into reversible and irreversible why let us see see this is the enzyme acetylcholine esterase okay this is so the substrate is uh, this acetylcholine and this is the enzyme and acetylcholine you, you can see here the cation site and this is the ester site and accordingly the, in this enzyme we have the anionic site and we have the esteretic site the anionic site you know, this this uh, cation will bind to this anionic site and this ester will bind to the esteretic site you can see here here it binds to uh, the tryptophan amino acid and here it binds to the serine residue okay and when the acetylcholine ester is acts uh, there will be hydrolysis so h will bind here oh will bind here and we will have the choline and acetic acid and the enzyme is freed okay and to this enzyme uh, other drugs like carbamates organophosphates oxyzymes they can also bound and uh, carbamates they these uh, uh, carbamates or organophosphates they can bind to this acetylcholine esterase and carbamates bind carbamates bind to both sides acetylcholine you can see acetylcholine binds to both anionic site and esteretic site carbamates also bind to both anionic site and esteretic site okay and because of that these carbamates can be hydrolyzed can be hydrolyzed okay so there there is no case of poisoning of with carbamates why they can be hydrolyzed because like acetylcholine they bind to both anionic site and the esteric site okay and uh, organophosphates they only bind to the esteretic site only they only bind to the esteretic site and uh, the phosphorylated enzyme once it is phosphorylated they phosphorylate and once it is phosphorylated it becomes very very stable and cannot be hydrolyzed so they cause irreversible binding whereas this is reversible binding okay and these oxyzymes these oxyzymes they bind to both anionic site as well as esteric site and free the enzyme okay so in case of organophosphate poisoning these drugs are used uh, to to free the enzyme so now based on this we can have a reversible anticholine esterases they are carbamates which can again be classified as short acting and medium acting short acting quaternary ammonium compounds like hydrophonium and medium acting quaternary ammonium compounds like neostigmine pyridostigmine and tertiary amines like physostigmine they are all reversible some of the carbamates are also irreversible uh, very few like carbaryl propoxor okay but mostly the organophosphate compounds are irreversible and uh, they are irreversible anticholinesterases and and can be the cause of poisoning and the organophosphate compounds like parathion malathion guthion tabun serine somon etc so they all they are used there are number of uses and if we discuss then one by one on i they and they act on the surplus smooth muscle and cause the contraction of surplus smooth muscle of iris and cause meiosis they can they can be used as meiotic pilocarpine carbocal they also 
um, uh, cause the ciliary muscle contraction and uh, there will be opening of the canal of sclem and the uh, aqueous humor drainage occurs and they can be useful in glaucoma so the drugs like physostatic mean pillow carpine carbuccal can be used then they cause smooth muscle contraction smooth muscle contraction of uh, smooth muscle of uh, ilium so post operative paralytic ileus and uh, also urinary bladder smooth muscles is contracted so in atony of bladder also they can be used with an alcohol physostatic mean and as a prophylactic neostigmine can also be used then another autoimmune disorder myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder in which antibodies are developed against the uh, uh, nm receptor nicotinic muscular receptor in the skeletal muscle so there is less number of receptor so uh, the purpose is to increase the level of acetylcholine so that maximum binding with nicotinic muscular receptor can occur so whatever receptor available they should be maximum utilized for that purpose anticholine esterases like neostigmine pyridostigmine can be used in myasthenia gravis then all these drugs produce bradycardia uh, on heart so in case of paroxysm and tachycardia we can use use these drugs then as you, we all know acetylcholine is uh, or cholinergic function is memory is a cholinergic function and uh, uh, in in case of alzheimer's disease or dementia there is decreased level of acetylcholine so this this to counteract this we have to increase the acetylcholine level by use of uh, anticholine strategies like tacrine donepezil rivastigmine galantamine etc then we can use them in several poisonings uh, first of all atropine poisoning atropine is an anticholinergic drug so the opposite action can be uh, counteracted by physostigmine and physostigmine why physostigmine is used because it can cross blood brain barrier so the cns actions of atropine can be counteracted they can also be used in urinary poisoning and cobra poisoning the poisoning due to a neurotoxin drugs like neostigmine atropinum can be used and poisoning or overdose with uh, many drugs which have uh, Uh, anticholinergic side effects like uh, antihistamines antidepressants and antipsychotics like phenothiazines uh, we can use uh, anticholinergic drugs like physostigmine to counter the anticholinergic side effects okay thank you